I don't know, are we rolling? Oh, look at this. What a propitious time. It's the clock on the wall says 421 now. So I almost made it. I'm going to point that out because I'm only up at 4 in the morning because of my good friend Elon Musk. He's probably an inspiration of many of us. But this guy slept on the factory floor. I know likes the number 420 for some strange reason. And if he can sleep on the Tesla factory floor to make stuff happen, I can probably get up at 4 to make stuff happen. Now, I got, I got a... Uh, um, uh, finally maybe found a decent camera app for my phone so I can just document this and share it with people with my scruffy hair and my bad, terrible ways. All I wanted to be able to do was record the video. So let's see if this works. I'm going to press, or sorry, it is four in the morning. I just wanted to be able to pause the damn video and then pick it up later so I can sort of journal what I'm doing instead of you press stop and then that's the video. It seemed basic, but I'm an opinionated sort. So let's press pause. Okay, maybe that worked. So today in my uh, kitchen near the front door, I've got some of the motors that I've made, and we're going to take these in to the shop. Um, and I'm also bringing in the coffee maker to the shop so it lives there. So if I even want coffee in the morning, I've got to leave this funny little loft that I rent and go to work. No matter what damn time it is. Because if Elon Musk can sleep on the factory floor... Now this feels harsh, and when the world is harsh, it's good to wear the blue light blocking glasses. I put on my orange space goggles, and here we go! This is probably one hell of a way to make an introduction. I want to document this for sure. And the world is maybe documenting everything. There's nothing too special in documenting most of what we do. What I do here, well, it's like Brian Adams said in a really crappy love song that I've never really liked. Everything I do, I do it for you. And that's only because of forsaken a stable job to work in this big mess here to tackle climate change, global warming. Does it look like it? Probably not. On closer inspection, I hope it does. And if you keep following this, you'll see exactly how it does. And let's say that that goal gets accomplished, and we really do come up with a breakthrough source of energy against all odds, right? So I don't see a whole lot of support here. This doesn't look like very much at this point. And it's all on me to build it into something. And I will. But I need support, and doing this all by myself is extremely lonely. <laughs> just, you're all by myself. So documenting it for others lets me share this experience, as crazy as it is, and maybe give you a little bit of entertainment that isn't all pretend, because this is real. And I hope it's also entertaining. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> Second, it's my aim to change this planet in two very important ways. And I'll probably fail because the moment I say, oh, I'm going to change the world, you know what to expect. Yeah, right, right? And the people who do change the world seldom change it for the better because they didn't set out to change the world. That happened maybe as kind of an accident or something, right? Here's the two goals. First, we're going to make really radical breakthrough technology that leaves carbon fuels in the dust. They're already obsolete, and they've already been obsoleted. But the trouble is, every time this technology gets created, human nature has got in the way. People try to protect the idea. Do you know how risky it is for me to put this online even so? We live in a world of guns. It's not that hard to kill people. And I could be killed by a gun at any minute. Look at these windows. Plenty of room for snipers and this is America. I'm nervous about it. If I don't die, and let's say that this actually succeeds and we have rendered carbon-based fuel obsolete. And when BP calls themselves an energy company, it's not really so, they're a fuel company. We don't actually need 
fuel. Fuel is not energy. Energy is abundant. We're surrounded in it. There's even forms of energy we don't understand, like dark energy out there among the stars. They say that's 80% of the content of the universe, and we don't even know what it is. So I wish a gasoline company would not bill themselves as an energy company because we can't even define what energy is in the cosmological sense. They're not an energy company. They're a fuel company. And we aim to make fuel obsolete. It already is obsolete. The trick is reinventing it and not letting human nature stand in the way with all the self-protection and the idiocy and the greed and the tinfoil hats. And once that's done, you can imagine it would be pretty darn lucrative, right? And this guy with the crazy hair up at 4.20 in the morning, it might have a little bit of money because he invented something almost as cool as, I don't know, iPhones? And perhaps a heck of a lot more valuable, not only to mankind, but the other species that inhabit this imperiled earth. So let's say that that ends up generating a small amount of revenue. What are we going to do as a company? Prioritize shareholder value? I sure hope so. But it's time for the shareholders to share what they hold, right? Just a bunch of rich shareholders do no good for anyone other than themselves unless you have a few who are intentional about doing good for others. <laughs> That's point two of the company, doing good for others and not in an altruistic sense. You see this? How many shelves do I have? I've got a bunch of old shelves that were mostly donated to me. Why don't I have a bunch of nice shelves? Certainly, if you're working on climate change, you should be well supported, right? Nope. <laughs> if you're writing software and you have a good pitch deck, you might be well supported. If you're well connected, you might be well supported. But if you are trying some avant-garde crazy way to render carbon fuels obsolete, this is actually why I want to document this. In my case, this is what it looks like. Scruffy beard, crazy hair, four in the morning, lots of cardboard boxes. And this is real. I've been an inventor my entire life. And this is the most support I think I've ever realistically had. There have been people who financially supported me, but they never even bothered to pay the taxes right. I'm in debt because I worked for them. And I've put up with it. I've said yes to this because I want to see this happen so much. And after it does, here's what I want to see happen. Is that when people go out there and try to invent something better for the world... They don't need a pitch deck to get support. So there are a few basic criteria there. And if I keep up the habit of documenting this, I hope it becomes a record. Not only for maybe some new thinking on the planet, but long after I'm dead and gone. Maybe people can say, wow, that founder really recorded what he did, and we can look back at all the crazy shit that he said, and blah, 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 blah. Sorry, this is on YouTube. I guess I can't cuss. One of the things that we can really pay attention to is, okay, this world will have creators in it until everybody is brainwashed. And if we never succeed at brainwashing everybody, we're always going to have creators. And creators are always going to disrupt, and haters are always going to hate. So there's always going to be new stuff happening that nobody can predict. And established industries tend not to like that because it's a threat. It's a very real and very legitimate threat. But as long as it happens... We're going to have people that eschew normal employment and for whom a goal in life is more important than the money and the prestige that they can get in other places. Because, like Eleanor Roosevelt, Roosevelt said, they believe in the beauty of their dreams. The full quote there is, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. And if you study, for example, the history of the Wright brothers who built the first airplane, these were two crazy cats. Bicycle mechanics, of course, who believed in the beauty of their dreams, and now we have airplanes. So this is of substantial impact when it succeeds. But there were millionaires in the Wright brothers' day, and none of them supported two brothers building the first airplane. These guys had to go on their own dime and their own time to Kitty Hawk's blowing sands. And these, these cats were trying to cook biscuits out in the middle of nowhere. And they've gone to a place so windy they can't keep the fire lit to cook the biscuits in order to eat. Nobody was cheering them on. They didn't have a cell phone to record their stupid little progress. They didn't even probably have cardboard boxes, for all I know, right? They really put up with some adversity. And because of their willingness to suffer and believe in the beauty of their dreams, we have airplanes. But history is written by the winners. 
And there are a lot of people who believed in the beauty of their dreams and yet did not succeed because nothing is guaranteed in this life. Not even that. What would the world be like if we truly located those who believe in the beauty of their dreams, but don't just dream, who end up folding their whole life and existence around that dream and its beauty and risk success, but not keep expecting people to do that on their own dime and their own time while we have other billionaires building yachts and just going and dismantling bridges so they can fit their personal yacht through the old 400-year canal somewhere in a different country, right? Well, there's people here trying to solve major existential problems and not being able to buy enough shelves to put everything on. <laughs> That's goal number two. And I want to start with that. First, goal number two is taking lab queen but legitimate technologies like this one and building them into a state where they literally render carbon fuel and its toxicity obsolete. Not just the toxicity of carbon dioxide and its tremendous impact on coral, on species at the poles, on things many people don't see because they don't travel there and don't pay attention, but it's a tremendous impact and that's compounded by the ultimate toxicity of burning coal and its mercury and arsenic emissions that go out into our world and our children and our cancer cases and our autism cases and all of the damage that those fossil fuels truly cause. Let's just move beyond it. And the wonderful thing is haters are gonna hate and creators are gonna create and this stuff has been created. Well, because it's so nuts, you can't even write a piss deck on it, right? Because it's a breakthrough, and breakthroughs don't make sense. So how can you expect anybody to invest in a business that doesn't make sense? We need a different model for truly finding the effective creators in society and supporting them, rather than expecting talented inventors to somehow make it on their own because they're also good with money and also good at writing business plans and also good at writing pitch decks and also good with people. A lot of inventors aren't. They're cagey, curmudgeonous weirdos who suck at everything else except what they're good at. And these are the ones that seldom succeed and their inventions die with them. So when a company has a lot of revenue from creating a brand new products category, I'll be damned if this founder spends the rest of his life on a yacht, taking apart bridges so he can fit his yacht through with his replacement wife. Screw that. How about supporting people who truly aim to better this world and aren't all just talk, but are willing to fold their lives around it and make it happen? That's the worthy goal that I'm up at 4 a.m. to start creating, and that's what I want to document. We're here at the 13-minute mark. That's more than enough for today. Thanks for watching.